Joining me now on the podcast is Métis artist Tegan Gaze, all the way from BC. It is great to have her here. You know her singles, Messed Up, Blame the Wine, I Don't Want to Fall in Love Anymore, I Don't Need a Boy, and she's got a brand new single out right now, which is a great one. She wrote it with Chad Kruger, and it's called If You Show Me Yours. I love that title, and it's kind of one of those expressions that uh, you think, okay, what is that? But it's beautiful in the song. And we're, we're going to talk about that. Welcome to the show, Tegan. Thank you so much for having me, Dave. My pleasure. We've talked on the audio podcast once before. Now we're getting to see each other, which is great. I love when we can turn the cameras on and uh, have a real visit. Yeah, I know. This is so nice. I love it. The song is If You Show Me Yours. We're going to talk about a bunch of other stuff, but let's start with that. Now, you wrote this song with Kadu and with the front man for Nickelback, and they just got uh, into the Juno Music Hall of Fame or the Canadian Music Hall of Fame. Uh, and that is Chad, and I'm going to call him Kruger. Some call him Kroger. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I wrote it. Uh, I wrote it with Chad and Kadu. And uh, yeah, it was a pretty, it was a pretty surreal uh, opportunity. Like it was um, just magic, a, ma a magical day. Now, how did it come about that uh, you got to meet Chad? So I was actually there recording with uh, Kadu. We have a song coming out together and uh, I was in the studio there at Chad's place and he happened yep. to be there. And so, um, yeah, we just, we ended up writing a song in the middle of vocal takes when I was doing a, a Kadu song. So it just, it was just a really, wow. I know it just like kind of happened. One of those things. And we kind of previously, like, I know, like Kadu was telling Chad that I was, uh, you know, coming there. And so like, it, it, you know, we were planning on possibly writing a song, but nothing was like set in right. stone. So it was really cool that it, uh, that it ended up happening. And, um, yeah, like Chad had the title and, and it's funny that you, funny that you say, uh, what you said, because you are kind of, it's not what you think you hear the song title and you're like, and that's how I felt when Chad told me the title too. I was like, if you show me yours, and I kind of like laughed. And he's like, your heart, your heart. And I was like, ah, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> now I get it. Yeah, now, now it I makes get sense. It. Yeah. <laughs> so it was That's so cool. Yeah, it was really cool. But I, I, I like when titles can be uh, make you think one thing and you're ch turning it around. So, and it obviously works perfectly. But for that moment, you hear it. Uh, and I, I'm thinking of another song, and there's many examples, but Dallas Smith with his song Sleeping Around which oh, makes yeah. you think he's thinking about sleeping around, but it's I'm sleeping on the couch. I'm sleeping in the truck, sleeping around two or three hours a night. So it's not what that title kind of for a moment. You go, oh, that's kind of fun or funny. Yeah. And then it's something different. So that part is cool on its own. But uh, speaking of cool, though, Kadu and Chad are two of the coolest guys around. So to write with them, uh, that that would have been a blast. It seriously was like I they are both so funny and and yeah just such kind human beings to be in a room with them was amazing. And um, Chris Baseford and Chad also pr produced the song. So working with Great. them with the production was like unreal. Uh, again, like Chris is just so talented and uh, Chad, I mean, I still like have to like take a step back. Even when I was in the studio working with them, I had to like take a step back and be like, holy crap. If my, 10 year old yeah. self could see me now like i remember going to school like listening to how you remind me on the walk on my little like whatever i was listening to at the time on my ipad and, or ipod and i'm like man like if that little girl knew what i'd be doing right now she would like not believe it except maybe she would because i who knows i had high dreams when i was back in those days which i still do but it was just it's so cool yeah, yeah. it's so amazing when you look at it that way what your 10 year old self would think and, you know, you only imagine at that age and at the age of 16, you imagine. And then, you know, then it happens. And uh, uh, it's incredible to and But and also it's incredible to stop and appreciate that. Right. To realize, take a moment to go, wow, like I'm living what I once only dreamed of. Absolutely. And I yeah. always say, like, I can't believe I did this or I can't believe I'm doing this. Like, it's like one of my favorite things to say, like, I can't believe it. But when I really think about it, I'm like, I can believe it. Like I, this is something that I yeah. dreamed about. This is something that I like, that I always wanted. I was like, I do believe it, but it's still one of those things where it's like, I still can't believe it in like a way, but um, it's yeah. really cool. I'm very grateful and uh, very happy. 
Now, you know a thing or two about production aside from just being in that room, the production room with Chad uh, and Chris, but because you have a degree in audio engineering. What uh, what was the inspiration? I mean, it's tied to music, but what inspired you to take that, take that, to uh, have that degree, get that degree? Yeah. So when I was done, uh, when I finished high school, I took a year off and yeah. I knew that I wanted to do something musical. I was um, a competitive, competitive figure skater growing up and wow. have always been like very driven at a very young age. And when I quit that, I turned to music. And when I finished high school. By that time, I knew I wanted to do something with music at this time, but I just, I just didn't really know what. <clears throat> and so when the audio program came up, Kelowna was close to home and it was small town vibes. I came from like a really small town. So I kind of wanted to just baby step up to the city. And I was like, okay, hey, Kelowna is beautiful. And yeah. Um, yeah, I was like the thought of being able to create my own music sounded so exciting and mm -hmm. so cool. So I took the audio program, not knowing exactly what I was getting myself into. I was the only girl in my class and it was just one of the best experiences. The one, one of the best experiences I learned so much. I definitely realized that I like, <clears throat> I like being on um, the other side of the board. Like I love entertaining. It's my absolute right. favorite thing, but I can appreciate being on the other side. Um, of, and I can understand it as well. Like when I'm, when I'm working yeah. with a producer, I like that I like can, you know, have a good conversation with them and talk about it. Cause I kind of understand. Um, so yeah. that's really cool, but, uh, singing and entertain, like, you know, being like, I love performing. It's my favorite. So. Incredible. And I know that it was around the age of 13, you started to pursue your musical path. You were a professional figure skater, um, possibly heading to the Olympics. So that was the goal at that point. So music came along and was it just kind of, you went straight to the music and left behind the skating or was there a time when you were kind of juggling both? Um, no. Um, like I, I, I was so, when, when I figure skated, it was all I did. Like it was, it was, um, right. it was a very competitive sport. It was morning. It was like sometimes lunches after school skating, after school off ice during the summer. Like it was, um, it was a lot. And so I didn't have time yeah. to do anything else. And then I had school. So, um, when I, it wasn't until I, I quit figure skating that I, and like when I quit figure skating, I really quit. Like I, I hung up my skates and I just was like, I need a break. Um, and I turned to music and like, there's times where I'm like, Oh, like, I wish I would have, I wish I would have stuck it out for, you know, the rest of high school. Cause I, I, I quit at, yeah, at 14. And so I still had a couple years of high school left. Um, but when I think about it, I'm like, there's a reason why I quit when I did. And, and, the way I did because I just I turned to music and I put all that like drive um into my music so God works in mysterious ways he sure does that's yeah. incredible and let's talk about mysterious ways uh we're gonna get to songwriting in a bit but mysterious ways meaning how you ended up performing and that how you will perform this summer at Boots and Hearts it's an incredible oh, yes. story you so made this happen I did. Okay. So I, uh, I'm, I'm playing at Boots and Hearts this summer. And when the uh, graphic came out for Boots and Hearts, I wanted to play that festival so bad that I ended up making my own graphic and I put my name underneath Hardy and Nickelback's name. And I was like, I'm going to look at this every day and I'm going to visualize and I'm just going to believe it. And like a couple weeks later, I, I got the, 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 I got notified that I was doing boots and hearts, the great news. And I was just like, unbelievable looking at, looking at the original graphic and then the graphic I made and then the actual graphic all side by side. I'm just like, Oh my gosh, I cannot believe this. <clears throat> and I actually did it again last week. Um, cause I saw this girl on TikTok. Uh, right. say that in order for her to like how she kind of gets up in the morning and uh, like has been living her life for the past little while is uh, she'll wake up really early and she'll just spring out of bed. She'll put a big smile on her face and she'll say everything that she's grateful for that day as if it already happened. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this. So a couple <laughs> weeks ago, I guess last week I, I started doing that and like, I'm not a morning person. I tell you, like, I'm not very good at waking up. I'm like, how do people do this? But I started doing right. this 
And I just would, I'll, if I have to wake up early, I just spring out of bed and I put a smile on my face and I start saying everything that I'm grateful for. And I, I've been having the best days, but I really wanted to be on Canada's country a playlist, but I wanted to be the cover girl. I was like, I'm going to manifest this and I'm going to do what this girl does. Wake up every morning, plaster a smile on my face and, and, and act as if I already got off the cover of this. Yeah. And I did it last week and then I ended up getting on the cover and it was just like such a surprise and so unreal. Wow. And I'm like, wow. Like, I mean, obviously it takes a lot of like hard work and dedication and, you know, a lot sure. of things, but you know, really just, believing and uh believing it's actually yours and believing it's true and and manifestation like it's uh it's been working great so far so if you want <laughs> to tomorrow morning for you to have a million dollars just let me know <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good if you could work on yeah. that for me I'll, I'll get you the details of my banking and the <laughs> i got you <laughs> i think that's an incredible story both of those stories tegan and it kind of emphasizes to everybody out there, like you really got to believe it. Like you said, talent, hard work, all that stuff, but but to also um, manifest and be, I love what you said, be grateful mm -hmm. bef as, before it happens as if it's already happened. I agree yeah. with all that, that that puts you in a certain state and um, as opposed to walking around being ungrateful, well, then nothing yeah. really comes to you. It's kind of like a circle. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I, be grateful for Incredible you have in order to get more more so but i mean you you just that boots and heart story just blows me away i mean that's uh wow i know incredible um yeah. now you've had a chance to write with some pretty cool writers and I, i'm not i don't have all the names here but uh like gordy sampson phil barton patricia conroy yeah. patricia uh, gordy's canadian as well of course and uh, patricia a great canadian country artist and now a big huge songwriter writing all kinds of hits um Let's go back a bit with the songwriting. When did you first, we know around 13, you got into music and singing. But when did you start writing songs? I started writing songs is as soon as I, I, I quit figure skating. My uncle gave me my first guitar and I learned my first three chords. And I was actually writing a little bit before I got my guitar too. And actually, this is a funny story. I might as well tell this because it's actually hilarious. So sure. when, <laughs> when I... I quit figure skating. Um, I was still in high school and I begged my mom to let me homeschool. And she at the time was also going to school. So she was not home. My dad was working. So there was no one at home to keep an eye on me to make sure I was doing my schoolwork. And I just was like, mom, like, please, like, I really want to stay home. Like, I don't fit in with high school. I don't want to go. And I just begged her and I made every excuse up in the book that I was just like, I can't, I can't go to high school. Don't, don't put me through it. Please let me stay home and I'll, I'll homeschool. And so yeah. she let me and I, all I did was write songs all day and I watched the wow. Ellen show and pretended as if I was like, I always wanted to be on the Ellen show. It was like, I'm going to be on Ellen. And it was like a dream. And so I would watch Ellen and I would write music and I did, I, I attempted to do my schoolwork, but I just did not do a good job. And, um, I had like a book of songs and my friends would come over on the weekend and we would just sing all my songs and we'd have slumber parties. And of course uh, my mom, cause I, and I was showing her old homework from the year before. That's how I would get by. My mom's like, did you do your schoolwork? And I would like show her old homework. It was so bad. And so I obviously ended up not doing good that semester. My teachers got a hold of my mom and they're like, yeah, Tegan failed. And my mom's like, was obviously so upset and so disappointed with me, but it was only one semester. Yeah. So she sent me off to Powder King. She's like, well, you're not doing schoolwork. You already failed. So you might as well go do something and take your guitar and go up to Powder King and, and go snowboard and sing songs for the rest of the semester. So I was wow. like, yes. So I went and I did that. And then I when I came back, because I had to do, obviously go back to my mom's like, you're going back to, like you're going back to high school. So I went back yeah. to school and I had to take like, I, uh, had to take all hard classes that semester and and obviously make up for all of the, uh, you know, classes I didn't do. But um, I ended up writing a lot of amazing songs. And I and and um, I mean, that was just kind of a funny story. That was the first time yeah. I those were like my first songs that I ever wrote was when I should have been at school. <laughs> That's a funny little story. Oh, man. That's what happens. Yeah. That's you. I mean, you, you followed your passion. You literally, that was all you could focus on. It was. And that's, I, I made up every excuse I could find for my mom, not let to, to not let me go to school so I could stay home and, and write songs. 
it's incredible that drive that when you're in music and you want to be that person, that that artist, that you just have to write all the time and you have to sing yeah. as well, but you want to write and the ideas are flowing out. Do you remember, Tegan, the first song you wrote that you said to yourself, this song is one I could record, or this is like a commercial song versus maybe some of the earlier ones that might not be ones you would perform. Ooh. Was you know, one that clicked? There is still a song that sticks with me, and it's one of the yeah. first songs that I ever wrote. And wow. um, and it's still a song that, like, my friends growing up and, like, my family and stuff, that they're, like, they think the song's really cute. I don't know if I'd ever record it, but it's called Something About Coal. And I, I, I wrote this from like a real life experience. Uh, there was this boy that I really liked and um, he was like my really good friend. And I did not tell him that I liked him, but I did, but he was kind of like a cocky guy and, and uh, kind of like full of himself growing up. And I, and I ended up writing a song about it and I never told him cause we were friends and I didn't want him to think that I liked him, heaven forbid. And so yeah. I, I never showed him or told him. And then I, I, one of my friends um, that I went, I didn't even go to high school with her, but she was kind of like from the same area. One of my friends growing up when I was in high school, I showed it to her and she sent it to him. Oh and, my goodness. Oh my gosh. When I tell you, like, I remember I was at home and I, he called me and I thought it was really weird because I hadn't talked to him in a while. And I, I, I answered the phone and he was like, so I heard the song he wrote about me. And I am not even Whoa. kidding you. I was like, this is no. I remember running, jumping in the bathtub and like I had like a hoodie on and I remember putting my hoodie over my head and just like screaming. I was like, <laughs> no. And my friends were over and I was like, I'm to talk about you. I was like, no, that's not true. And I remember calling my one friend, Callie, Callie Pym. She was the one that sent it to him. And I remember I was like, oh, Callie. <laughs> she's like it's so good but still to this day like it's still a song that um is always special to me and i and i would i would love to uh potentially put it out one day for for fun just because i think it's so relatable and it's just it's so innocent innocent and cute and i really like it but uh yeah so and that's that's when i used to just write by myself too no co-writes or anything yeah. i used to do all my own writing so oh sure that's so cool that a song from back then stands up uh, the test of time in your eyes is still good quality. Well, let's fast forward then to when you started to write, uh, co-write with people like the names I mentioned earlier, like Patricia Conroy and Gordy Sampson and Phil Barton, et cetera. And obviously Chad Kruger and, and Kadu um, recently. Uh, what is it like when you go in, like go back to the beginning when you go in with a big, big songwriter, are you nervous at the first? Because now you've written a ton of songs, you, you, you're an expert at it, but back then it was new. Was it nerve wracking? Absolutely. I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. And, and one of my, um, one of my first co-writes actually with Patricia and Dwayne and Jeff Johnson, that was for, I don't need a boy. That was like one of like my first kind of co-writes. Um, and same with blame the wine, blame the wine was actually my first ever co-write. So, um, I mean, I love co-writing. I love, you know, putting a, a bunch of different brains and, and in, you know, in because there's things you wouldn't think of that other people will. And it's just something that you have to kind of like when you're used to write on, on your own, you get your way every time. Like you, it's what you say goes and you don't have to compete with anybody uh, on, you know, what it is. It's, it, and with mm -hmm. co-writing, you kind of just have to like, let it all go and may the best, may the best lyric win, may the best, you know, whatever win. Right. So, um, I definitely feel like I have, I hope I have a good understanding. Cause like when I go into a room, like I want people to be able to write with me again. So, um, you know, you just kind of got to hear everyone out and you know if you say yeah. something and don't be scared to say anything either like that's an, something i had to get used to is like but no idea is a stupid idea and i think that was something that um was challenging at first was just you know being able to just you know be vulnerable and, and say how you feel in a room full of pros so yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I love it. And, uh, and I feel pretty comfortable now. And another, another thing with uh, going into a room with, with writers is, is I like to be as open as possible too. Um, when I go into a room, there's, I try and not be like, I need this. I'm looking for this and all this kind of stuff. I kind of like just going in and, and getting a feel of the people I'm writing with in the room. And it's not just about me. It's like, 
what do we all feel like writing today as a unit? Because mm-hmm. we have to work together on this and it's not just mm-hmm. about me. It's about how we're all feeling so that we can get the best song. And that's something that I'm, I'm, I'm really strong like on when I go in is like, I just want everyone to, to, you know, be able to vibe together. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It makes sense. Yeah. It's such a, a collaboration when you're writing with others. And uh, as you said, there's certain, uh, ways you want to make it work, I guess. And are, are there tips for uh, going into a co-writing session for anyone out there who is a solo uh, writer and yeah. hasn't co-written before? What what do you, I've asked this question a lot of times before, but what do you prepare ahead of time? What's kind of like the etiquette when you're, when you're in the room? Definitely be prepared. Um, like, you know, go in with some titles, uh, maybe even if there's something that you've already started just to, you know, ha- you know, just be prepared. That is a, you know, sure. a great one. But then also too, um, you know, don't, don't be so stuck on your ideas. You know, if there's something that you really, right. you know, that's something um, that I, you know, again, like something you have to like work at, like not your idea is not always, you know, the right choice or the best idea or whatever. It just kind of, kind of got to let everything like let your and let your walls down. Don't be scared. There's nothing stupid. There's been times where I've like said something out loud. And even though they might not, um, it might not be the right lyric, but then they get ideas from that. So just don't be scared to speak your mind. And uh, you got to just, you know, let it all out and be vulnerable. And and uh, yeah. So that is so cool. Yeah, I've heard that a ton of times about the part about not censoring the lyric or idea like in your mind and not saying it. So say whatever, yeah, um, say as you it. said, either maybe it's better than you think, or somebody else will use that as a springboard to something else. A hundred percent. And that happens yeah. more times than I can tell you where I say something right. and I'm like, Ooh, and then they're like, Oh, well, we could do this actually. What about this? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> that's, that's great. cool. That's cool. It's cool to see that dynamic happening. The magic of a writing room and, how you go in with, like you said, you go in with some ideas, but not a finished song. And by the end of it, end of the three hours, you usually have a finished song that wasn't there to start with, which is magical that you've yeah, created it this. Well, it's always yeah. a good day when you, when you write a good song, like it's, it's, a, yeah. it's electric. Like you feel good. It's, it's like a drug. You're just like, ah, it's just, yeah. it's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, feels great. And then it's that journey of the song from that day forward. Um, about you've written with, tons of uh, amazing writers, but is there anybody Tegan on your dream writers list that you know of and you just waiting for it to happen or waiting to manifest it? Um, well, I've always really wanted to write with Kelly Archer. Um, so she is one, uh, that when I, when I go back down to Nashville, I was supposed to write with her when I was in Nashville the last time, but then she ended up getting sick and I didn't get to write with her. But I ended up writing with Gordy Sampson. So like it all worked out, but uh, she's still on my on my list. I just I love her. I love her melodies. I just think she has and I'm a big, big melody girl. Um, Obviously, I love lyrics, too. But like when I listen to a song, the first thing that that strikes me is melody. And and then I and then I listen to the lyrics. So um, I just love her melodies. So I'm hoping um and I'll just wake up every morning and put a smile on my face. And I'm so grateful that I wrote with Kelly Archer. <laughs> so that will be <laughs> the next one. <laughs> we'll stay tuned to your socials to see when that happens. Perfect. <laughs> we will follow that. That is awesome. Kelly Archer, yeah, an incredible writer indeed. I'm um, speaking of manifesting and, you know, you got all this great stuff going on this summer with Boots and Hearts and Cavendish. What else in general in your music career, Tegan, have you always wanted to see happen? or recently, but what, what are some of the things you're looking forward to down the road that um, you want to see happen? I mean, I would love to go on, like, I mean, if we're dreaming big here, I want to go on a world okay. tour. I want to go, I want to tour. You know, if I, if I could, yeah. like, I would be touring every, playing every second of every day. Like, that's, that's what I, my, you know, I love to do. And that is my dream. And I'm, like I said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a born performer. Um, mm-hmm. It's, it's my, it's my everything. So if uh, that's kind of like where I see myself is like where I'm doing, like, I'm constantly playing. I'm, 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 I'm going on a tour. I want, I want to travel the world and I want to see the world, but I want to see it while I'm working. 
Um, I always like have things come up like opportunities to go on trips and stuff. And, and I always opt out not going just cause I'm like, you know what, I'll go there when I'm playing, you know, when I, when I'm, when I'm on my tours, I always like, yeah, yeah. like, like oh, I want to go there, but when I'm on tour. <laughs> so that's my <laughs> Love it. dream. Love it. That is amazing. Um, as we get set to wrap up here, Tegan, let's get into your influences because I, I haven't asked you that yet. Um, who are the artists that uh, inspired you and uh, kind of got you on this path? Absolutely. Oh, my God. I have so many. So I like I'll name off a few. But I mean, sure. Shania Twain, Maren Morris, um, Taylor Swift yeah. was a huge one growing up. Like she kind of is the one that like got me into, you know, singing and writing music, you know, seeing a young girl mm -hmm. like that in country music. Uh, do what she did is of course very inspiring. Um, I love I mean, Morgan Wallen. Um, gosh, there's just so many. Like Th Thomas Rhett is a big one. Like I love, I love yeah. him. I love him. He was a big one. Um, Kelsey Ballerini. I don't know if I already said that, but uh, you know, I, I love her style too. Like the, the country pop. Um, there's a lot. Yeah. There's so many. But those are those are just like those are a few. Parker McCollum. I love his stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. And like, for me too, there's always like, I'm, I'm in and out with different artists on which, like, which ones, like, I'm never just like completely set. Like I go in and in and out on different artists. So who knows, like next year you might ask me and it might be completely, completely different. But right now, like those are those <laughs> that I'm listening to and that I love. And like, if they, if they have an album coming out, like, um, I'm running. So. Yeah. Amazing. Great influences. Tegan, it has been such a pleasure to chat with you again and to visit with you with cameras on. Um, all the best with your new single, If You Show Me Yours, which is out there now. Our listeners uh, need to stream it and share it and tell the world about it. Uh, it's a great song, and I uh, look forward to seeing the success of that song as it climbs the charts. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Dave. I hope that you have a wonderful day. I don't know what it's like weather-wise, but it's sunny here, so I hope it's sunny for you there. And, uh, yeah, just thank you for having me. My pleasure, Tegan. Awesome. Once again, I've been talking with a Métis artist all the way from BC, Tegan Gaze. I'm Dave Woods. We'll see you next time.